We got the boy Bailey there. All right, who else we got on there? Uh, Cedric? Uh, Teddy, Linda, and uh, Chris. Is, is Glenn here? No? Glenn, no. Thank you, Lord. Great to have you guys. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Huh? Did you No, that's that's a verse. Oh, uh, Tookie, you, Tookie you actually helped me with the key some, and then I figured out the rest of the keys and put it together. Thank you, Tookie. Thank you, Tookie. <laughs> My musing man. What a blessing. Huh? Be given 
Yes, thank you, Lord. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Savior. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. This morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Hallelujah 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 Well everybody ought to have their mind Stayed on Jesus Well everybody ought to have their mind Everybody ought to have the mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus, hallelujah, 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 what's your mind on tonight? Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 26, 3 says, perfect peace will I give to him whose mind is stayed on me, for he trusteth in the Lord. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 4 says, to think on those things that are good and pure and honest and of good report. Cast down those imaginations and bring every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful Savior. I just have to do this one, Don. I just got to do this one. Let's do it. I love you, I love you, I love you. You're the rose of Sharon to me. I love you, I love you, I love you. And now Jesus, your Lord over me. Yes, Lord. Well, Jesus, your Lord over me. My God, you've given to me the complete victory. And Jesus is Lord over me. I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, Jesus. You're the rose of Sharon to me. I love you, I love you, I love you. And now your sweet face I can see. Jesus, your Lord over me. Oh, Jesus, your Lord over me. You've given to me the complete victory. And Jesus, your Lord over me. Yes, Jesus. 
Jesus, your Lord over me. Don, would you open, open us up in prayer, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day. It's been a good day. Raining in all, Father. We thank you for this day of fellowship. We, do, and we thank you for this place, Father, where we can come together in freedom and uh, share your truth, Father. And we love your truth. We uh, give us the strength to obey it constantly, Father. And we thank you for these uh, these people that you've uh, brought together and brought under the, our, our midst, Father. You say, well, two or more gather that you're yes, Lord. also in the midst. Yes, Father. Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for your presence, Father. And we... Uh, we just thank you for this place, Father, and thank you as we uh, listen to your word, Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Well, you kind of gave up on me for a little while. I, did, I, I can't <laughs> sing. Sing. Thank you, Lord. That's okay. Let's just keep on coming. Hallelujah. All right. We got all our technical difficulties worked out, Brother Cedric. As much as they are, he's not, he's not promising nothing. That's <laughs> no, all right. We've got to get them all straight. We're just going to improve that and get better and better on it. So thank the Lord. Our videos have. Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to thank all the listeners that are there. Uh, I know that uh, YouTube is not able to be uh, live streamed tonight. I apologize for that. Uh, we will be back on that next week. Yeah. Amen, Cedric. So, uh, but we will uh, tape it and we will put it on YouTube for all of our viewers there and make sure to hit the subscribe button and the uh, notification button so that you can receive our future videos. Thank you for being with us. I hope we can be a blessing to you in your endeavor and your pilgrim walk in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. So it's a blessing to have everyone tonight. I want to welcome my uh, mother-in-law. It's good to have her here from uh, California. She's uh, moved here and uh, going to be closer to us. I'm happy to be here, and I want to come every Sunday. Um, I was born a Catholic, and I haven't gone to church in a long time, and I need to hear about the Lord. So I do pray to him every single day. And I want to thank you and Joe so very much for not only the monetary help, but the blessings and the prayers that I do here with you guys. Well, we welcome you here. We're glad to have you to be part. We, we welcome you. I know that everyone here welcomes you. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What's going on, guys? Everybody doing good tonight? Good. Everybody have something special on their heart tonight? Hallelujah. I, uh, Claire, I had a um, knee problem this week. For about three or four days, my knee was hurting really bad. Jill knows. And, um, uh, Felt like an ice pick was in it, probably like yours was. And uh, I was trying to get up, and it was difficult to get up. And then uh, I was going to go work legs. They were, it was leg day, you know, coming up. And I prayed. I asked God. I said, God, would you, would you heal me? You know, like he yeah, seems to be, always does. And because um, the scripture says, for you have not because you ask not. And uh, so I asked the Lord. And the Bible says, even says in Second Chronicles chapter 16 that when Asa, at one time Asa was really close to the Lord, really walking with the Lord, and he asked the Lord to always, he always prayed first before he did anything. And the, but this one time he had a he had a disease in his feet, and he sought the physicians. He went to the doctor rather than seeking God. And there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor, but you should seek God first on everything. And, and the Lord sent a prophet to him and says, because you went to the physician and sought the physician before you sought me, then you're not going to get healed. You're going to be foot rotted on him, you know. So I said, well, Lord, I want to seek you, you know, because you said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And went Psalm 103, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, uh, you know, and all that's within me, bless the Lord, who for, and forget not his benefits, who forgive us all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. So I asked the Lord to heal me. And, um, and the pain continued somewhat. And then I, it came leg day, Don. And I said, oh, I don't think I can work legs. My knee is hurting. You know, going up the stairs hurt when your knees hurt. And I said, well, I'm just going to go, you know, and maybe just work my right leg, you know, because it was my left leg. You know me, Claire. <laughs> I got to go, Claire. So I went there and I started doing leg extensions first and the pain was there. But then as I went, the pain was going more and more away. 
and I was lifting heavy. I was using the other the, the leg that was hurting everything. By the time I was done, I came home and told Jill. I said, Jill, I said I have no more pain in my knee. My knee is fine, and it hasn't hurt since. Oh, praise God! And I said, praise God. So I always just wanted to give the Lord glory for His healing. And and Cedric, Cedric, would you tell your little testimony? Sure. So uh, I started off the week with a cold, and uh, I started off the week with a cold, and um, throughout the week, you know, I took some medication, and, um, took some some Dayquil, Nyquil, and I uh, did through my job, and I uh, started feeling better like on Thursday. And then I caught a stomach ache at my job on uh, Friday. And I told my manager, I said, hey, I know we got a lot of work to do, um, you know, but I'm still sticking out and go to work. Um, you know, stay here. He said, no, if I'm feeling bad, you know, you, you can go home. And my stomach was hurting so bad I couldn't walk straight. I had to walk or kind of with a limp, you know. And I was like, man, you know, what's going on with my stomach, you know? And it wasn't like, you know, I need to go to the restroom or anything like that. It's, more of an external pain, you know, where it's like my stomach was really tightening up, you know, and I can feel it, you know. So I said, hey, boss, um, you know, I really want to finish my job. You know, I, I stayed another couple of hours. I think I'm going to have to go home, you know. And so I called my, my parent and I told her, I said, hey, I think I need to go to the doctor uh, because I don't, I don't, I don't have to know what, what's going on with my stomach. And uh, then I called Pastor Don and I said, hey, I'm headed to the doctor. I said, my stomach is killing me. And he said, have you prayed about it? I said, no. And he said, well, uh, I think you need to pray about it. I said, no, I'm headed straight to the doctor right now. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty good, you know. He said, no, but I think you got to pray about it, you know, because the, the scripture says that there was this man named Asa who didn't seek the Lord and didn't get healed, you know. And so I thought about that. I said, man, I'm like five minutes away from this doctor's office, <laughs> you know, and like that. I, so I went up and prayed for him. I said, all right, Lord. I said, if it's your will, heal my stomach, Lord. And I said, because he's always healed me before. You know, I remember a job or something like that. He always heals me immediately. You know, like a couple months ago, I had some growing problems. You know, around my leg. It was hurting. You know, I just said, Lord, heal me. 20 seconds, gone. You know, so he's healed me before. But this particular time, I didn't ask him first. I just went straight to the doctor. And so uh, when I got to the doctor, I was signing the paper, signing in, and then my mom arrived, and then I said, you know what? I'm not going to go in there. You know? I didn't know you got that far. <laughs> yeah, I got that far. I, I was signing the paper, signing in. I said, you know, I'm not going to go in there. Stomach still hurt, and I said, I'm not going to go in there. And I said, Mom, I said, uh, and I said let's, go, let's go sit down. I'm going to go give me some soup. And I said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray about it. And uh, after I finished eating my soup, my stomach just started dying down. You know, I ate another bowl of soup. My stomach started dying down. I had another bowl of soup. My <laughs> Go get started. a stomach ache and eat some of soup. <laughs> my stomach started dying down. And then when I got home that night, my stomach had went from like 90% to 20%. You know, and uh, I called Pastor Don back and I said, you know, I said, I think not going to the doctor did me good. You know, I said, because my stomach, my stomach feel a lot better, you know. Your and, soup wasn't pink, was it? Uh, but it was good. Thank the Lord. We want to glorify God in that. It, it, it's not. It's it's the way the Lord chooses. The Lord could, you know, is praying about it first, but the Lord could choose to use a doctor to heal as well. It's not the way that we say not to. It's just that you seek the Lord early and and get that taken care of. There's a lot of things that go on in healings. You know, uh, we know in First Corinthians 11 when they were um, taking the Lord's supper in vain. You know that. Uh, Many were sick and some sleep among you. Uh, we know that the Lord told the man at the um, at the fountain, he says, uh, go and sin no more after you had been healed, lest a worse thing come upon you. So sin can hinder it as well. So when you do or even receive a healing, you know, you uh, want to keep that healing and uh, walk in the righteousness of the Lord. So um, anyway, that was a blessing. Anybody else have a testimony? Anybody on uh, even on Skype got a testimony you want to share? Something the Lord's doing in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm I'm glad to have my wife back. Everybody, it's kind of like, I guess you think, boy, she's been going away. She left Friday, uh, Friday, Friday to go to Sacramento. And she flew all day Friday. She flew all day Friday, got there Friday night, spent the night there with her mother and uh, helped her mother out to get things ready. And she came back. <laughs> and she came back last night. So it was a quick trip. She went around the world in two days. 
but I missed her dearly. I like my wife to be around. She's a blessing. So we am glad to have her back. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, any, anybody have anything? Thank you, Jesus. How about a, a scripture, a revelation, anything like that? I got a question. Okay. First, before you do the question, I'm, I'm, just one second. I, I want to say that uh, Wes and I did a video together, and uh, we did it on um, the, uh, the the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is it for today? The teachings that Jesus taught, the commands that Jesus gave, uh, are those for today? Or are we uh, under a different um, uh, um Dispensation, you don't want me to use that word, but but under a different, a uh, whole different gospel. Is there two different gospels? The gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of maybe Paul. And we we went through that. And um, and if you guys want to talk about that some tonight, because that, that's a very very important subject. I think a lot of people uh, feel like um, the things that Jesus said to do uh, that they don't need to do them. And just a couple of scriptures to show you what I'm talking about. Remember Matthew 28:19, Jesus said. All power and authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And he says, he told the disciples, go and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey what I have commanded you, to obey, observe all things that have been along with you always, even to the end. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 says that the Lord is coming back in fiery vengeance to execute judgment upon those that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to define, and we went into, and we did a, a, the video together, Wes and I, and we, we defined what the gospel of Jesus Christ was as being Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where Jesus actually spoke, and what, uh, and, and where we continue that, because remember, Jesus told them to go and preach that to all over the, all over the nations, or is there, was there something else that was supposed to be, because a lot of people have that confused, and they thinking, hey, I don't have to do what Jesus said to do. And uh, that's a big thing nowadays. And so you may want to look at that video or we can discuss it today. I'm sure Wes would be glad to do that also with us. So I just wanted to bring that forth. You may want to go to Only One Truth and look at that and listen to it. It's um, a little lengthy, but because it's a lot of scripture that we went through. I got, a, I got, a, I got something. Okay, let's, let, let me let oh, her say go first. Ahead. Okay, go ahead. It's just a question I was reading in Romans 8. Mm -hmm. um, it started in verse 19. Your creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected, for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be liberated from the bondage, from its bondage to decay, and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. Um, so my question, where, are you, where are you at? I'm sorry. We didn't Romans have time. 8. You know, you always tell me, you, you don't give us time to turn. You didn't give me any time to turn. Romans 8, what verses? 19. 19. The creation okay. waits in eager expectation okay. for the sons of God to be revealed. Okay. The creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. So, um, and it goes on to say, but by the will of the one who subjected it and hoped that the creation itself be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Okay, so um, when it talks about the creation being subjected to frustration, and the creation being liberated from its bondage to decay. What do you think the creation is speaking about? Is, is it just like the earth, plants, animals, or the creatures that he created in the heavenly realms? Uh, I actually, my, my, the King James actually reads, actually reads that for this cr uh, creature was subject to va vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The creature. Creature. Yeah. Yeah. What is it, what is it talking about? It's, it's talking about uh, what I see it here. Somebody else may want to say something on it. That, that it's kind of like second Corinthians five talks about. It talks about that we groan within waiting to be clothed upon with a new body that we're at. These bodies are subject to corruption. 
that they that they're not going to live forever, but that we that we looking but we looking for that glorious hope and delivered from from the bondage to hold back that we have living in these creatures and these vessels that we have. I think creation can be the same thing because all creation is is going to die and have have newness of life. You know, have what, a new body. What is uh, verse twenty two? We know that the whole creation has been groaning. Yeah, that? yeah. I'm going to give you another scripture that's very similar that, that helps explain that. Go to Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse one and two. Or you can go you can go further than that. You can go verses say one through three if you want. Um, for for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. So that kind of goes well, along. Well, what does it say in Romans 8.22? For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in oh. pain together until now. Okay, so right there it's saying creation. Yeah, yeah like the whole, all the creation okay, groans so. for that. Because there's still pain, there's still sorrow, there's still the death, there's still crying, there's still... So, the trials, huh? I, my, my question is more of yeah. uh, what is the... Yours says... Cre uh, Creature. Creature, and that mine says creation. So what is the creation that it's speaking toward? I, I think it's, it's the cre of us creatures. Uh, I think it can also be creation. I haven't looked into that particular word there to see which one is really, really closer to the Greek, but uh, I think the whole creation groans, waiting to, for the new heaven and the new earth, you know, because the, uh, everything here we look at is temporal. But what we don't look see and what we told to look at is in Second Corinthians four, we look at the things that are eternal, uh, not the things that are temporal. We look at, just like he says in Colossians three one, it's, it talks about if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We groan within us. I said, waiting to be clothed upon uh, to leave this creation because this is this is not heaven. So we experience knee pain. We experience uh, yeah. you know uh, things of of getting older. You know, and and we have that. We won't have that experience once we're with the Lord. We won't groan for that anymore. <laughs> we won't have trouble coming up the steps. You know, or we won't. We, we we'll, uh, we'll we'll get there. You know, and as a believer, uh, Claire, and as you, as you very well know, um, coming to an end of life or end of our physical life is not a bad or thing to be afraid of as believers. As an unbeliever, it can it is very scary. People that don't walk in the Lord with all their hearts and have not turned completely from sin, they need to be scary. You know, it needs to be scary because the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 6, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So it's it's, it's something to be scared of. But if you once you totally come to the Lord with a full repentance, then there's nothing to be scared of. It's joyous because Paul said that himself in Philippians chapter 3. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter, chapter 2. He said this. He said that that uh, he, he had a desire to go and be with the Lord, which was far better. He said, but he wanted to stay and help the others. And then when he finished his life, he was excited. He said, man, I've, I've come to the end now. But he said, I've kept, my, I've kept the faith. I fought the fight. You know, I've, I've laid hold of eternal life. You know, now it's in store for me to crown of righteousness, and not to me only, but to all those that love is appearing. Cedric? Uh, I just looked at that word. Creature and creation is the same Greek word. It's called... Uh, so, what so, does it mean? Okay, I can read it to you. It says the act of founding, establishing, and building, uh, the act of creating, creation, uh, individual things, uh, beings, a creature, a creation, anything created after irrevocable usage by which a man converted from the idolatry to Judaism was called the sum or aggregate of things created, institution, of ordinance. So, it's basically the whole creation. Yeah, it's, it's everything yeah. is groaning. Your version said. Creature, what you read? No, uh, King James. Oh, you're King James. Way to go, Don. Finally come around. He's just trying to follow along. <laughs> leave, leave him alone. He's over, he's over with me now. <laughs> oh, I thought it was very interesting because so many times I remember being so confused uh, reading the Gospels. Of Jesus Christ when he was telling uh, those to hey 
to any man to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and come after me for he'll lose his life. But if he loses his life for my sake, he'll truly be saved. Um, uh, and, and then reading, and then being told, he, the mic is, the mic is off, we can't hear them. Patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord, draw it near. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brothers, well, not at all, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by the, any other oath, but let your yes be yes, and you know, but you know, lest you fall into condemnation. Let's stop right there. Okay, he talks about being patient for the coming, waiting on the coming of the Lord. Uh, anybody have any comment on that? Huh? Is that faith, you know, it's coming. He's coming. Yeah. Amen. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it talks about, let's go to Second Peter. Pastor Doug, you want to hear from it? Yeah, you, can you hear from it now? Yeah. Hey, um, Wesley, go ahead, uh, Wesley. Hello, can you hear me? No, you still don't have anything. Go ahead, Wesley. I'm, I'm talking right now. Yeah, we can hear you, man. Okay. Get some reading. Oh, okay, Wes, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Wes. Okay, well, um, what do you want? Can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, we three. You, what you got on your heart? Okay. Oh, I was just, I was going to bring something up in Romans about the creation testifies. I was just thinking about how um, all creation groans and testifies uh, of the revealing of the sons of God. Whether you say creation or um, the creature, I think it all has to do with whoever of the Old Testament, because Hebrews chapter 11 says they will not be made perfect apart from us. So I think they're not going to be receiving their glorified bodies because the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive will meet him in the air. So we're not all going to get our glory. We're all going to get our glorified bodies when Christ returns. So I think that that's what Romans chapter eight is referring to. And as Don shared he he's going from first corinthians chapter 15 and kind of gave that same concept so that's what i was uh wanting to share off of that so thanks wes be patient therefore go ahead sorry about okay that. so you, can you get the other one working you're not gonna be able to get it working on the tv one no no, I have to work on that next okay. week. But okay. for the sake of him talking, though, I'd use my mic. Okay. For that. Can so, you hook that to a mic where it could be louder to a speaker or something and be louder? Possibly that one. Okay. You can try that or Jill can get you to another speaker. Okay. All right. Second Peter chapter uh, chapter three. Speaking of the of the coming of the Lord. Of being patient, um, what uh, Peter, what uh, what James is basically saying is that um, there's many that will not, um, that will seemingly falter away because they they think, well, the Lord's not coming or the Lord's delayed is coming, and they're not really getting ready. We also have other people that they concentrate on the coming of the Lord so much that they're thinking, well, man, I want the Lord to come back. But they're not they're not ready for the Lord to come back. And when you're ready for the Lord to come back, it doesn't matter when he comes <laughs> because you're walking in the light. Uh, you do. You will endure persecution uh, and you will go through tribulation. 
times. Uh, the Bible says that all that live godly shall suffer persecution. And we're to go through those things. Um, the scripture talks about that. Uh, I'm sorry, I told you uh, Second Peter, I want to go there, but I want to go to First Peter chapter First Peter chapter two first. Um, and just kind of talk about that suffering there a little bit. It says that says it here um, in chapter two, verse nineteen. He he says, uh, "For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully." What does it mean to suffer wrongfully? Anybody got an idea? Pay a price for something that you didn't do. Exactly. Okay. Uh, for what glory is it if when you be beaten for your fault, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and you suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. And then he goes for you here, and he gives himself as an example. He says, for even here unto where you called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So listen closely to what his steps are to follow because he suffered. We're to suffer the same way. What was the first step? But verse 22, what was the first step? We did no sin. Very good, Cedric. So you can suffer because you, you're not doing sin. You're not doing something that is going to please your flesh. So you may have to suffer because you're not doing that. For instance, somebody curses you and you just take it and not curse them back. Right. You know, you could feel, you could get an emotion of wanting to respond to that ugliness that that other person may have given you. But when you don't retaliate, then the Lord is pleased with that kind of behavior. Right. And we, 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 we all as Christians, as believers, will go through that because we're standing in Christ. Uh, and those, and again, that goes back to the teachings of Jesus Christ, right? So if you, if one slaps you on one cheek, turn to him the other cheek. Right. If one takes away your coat, give him your cloak also. Resist not evil. It also says in that same passage in that scripture, it says that you may have heard of old time that if you did one tooth for another tooth, but now I'll say unto you. Love your enemies. Correct. Bless those that. Say all manner of evil against you and persecute you and speak all manner of things. That goes along with what you always talk about, yeah. the teachings of Christ. This, that's a part of that. Yes, amen. So so the first thing Jesus suffered was he didn't sin when he was tempted or when somebody came at him and did, because my, they did terrible things to our Lord, as we know. Um, uh, and it, it says, neither was guile found in his mouth. Correct. In other words, there wasn't any cussing. There wasn't any complaining. There wasn't any uh, retaliating coming out of his none mouth. None of it in his heart. Huh? He didn't have none of it in his heart. That's because that, that's where we come from. It would have came, right? Exactly. So, so if we have that coming out of our mouth, what do we have, Don? You got a messed up heart. Not only is it in your heart, but in Galatians it says that um, you, you you're identified as walking in the flesh at that point. That Jesus uh, in the scriptures it talks about that Jesus was always pleasing to God because he was always walking in the spirit. There's a difference between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. Jesus never walked in the flesh, neither did Jesus have a corrupt heart. They both go together. So by Jesus having a clean, pure heart, Matthew 5, which you talked about, and also walking in the spirit at all times. He was being pleasing to God. So how to be pleasing to God and to be continuous pleasing to God is to walk in the Spirit. That's a, that's a good point because you said like in Galatians 5, 16, that walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. A lot of people ask me, well, well, um, what is walking in the flesh versus what is walking in the Spirit? I want to know how to walk in the Spirit. So how do I walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh? Do you want to explain that? So <laughs> If not, I will. I don't want to put you on the spot. That is fine. Um, basically, you have to identify, like you have said once before, you have to identify what's walking in the flesh. Once you have, I think we talked a bit about that by last year. Walking in the flesh is identified as doing sin or doing uh, something that you should be doing. What's not a faith is sin. Uh, obviously, breaking God's commandments, uh, complaining, like you said before. What, what about Galatians 5.19 that actually lists the works of the flesh? Correct. So if, you, if you're doing those things, Cedric, 
then you're definitely walking in the flesh, right? Right? Okay, so you're definitely walking in the flesh. So if I determined that was walking in the flesh, then what would be walking in the spirit? It will completely be the doing the opposite thing, right? Yeah. Not doing those things and doing those things of the fruits of the spirit that it says right below that would be walking in the spirit. Because the scripture says in Romans, Romans chapter eight, verse six, it says, if you live after the flesh, no, he says, says he who, li- who walks in the flesh cannot please God. Correct. He oh. cannot please God. And he says, if you live after the flesh, in other words, if you have any of those sins that talks about in Galatians 5, 19, envying, strife, ugly stuff coming out of your mouth, all these things, fornication, adultery, of uh, stealing, killing, so forth. If you do any of those things, he says you, you will not inherit the kingdom of God and you're not walking in the spirit. You know, somebody can say, well, I'm walking in the spirit. And they got a cuss word coming out of mouth. No, you're not walking in the spirit. You're walking in the flesh. You can also look at walking in the spirit as an active. It's not a passive statement. It's an active statement. Yes. If you're walking, you're literally walking. Kind of like, like a verb. Chapter. Yeah, you're walking. Yeah. In yes. Luke chapter one, verse five where Elizabeth and Zacharias was walking. They were not yeah. only walking. That's good. That's a good scripture. Let's let's turn there. Let's look at that just a minute. Where is that? Luke chapter 1. And if they have any bad fruit coming out, <laughs> it's not a good tree. That's right. That's good too, Don. Coming out. Yeah. Even if it looks good. That's right. Well, you guys are getting so sharp. I'm so proud of y'all. <laughs> I'm just feeding huh? off the dark Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter one is talking about uh, Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth. And let's see what the Bible says about Zacharias and Elizabeth. Uh, Zacharias was a high priest then. He made offerings to God. This was before uh, before Christ had come to earth. Uh, Zacharias lived and they both ended up having a child named, who knows their child? John the Baptist, right? That was their that was their, their firstborn child. Uh, matter of fact, Elizabeth was well stricken in age. She was an old lady. Wasn't, past her time she was past her time of having a child and she had a child in her old age but before that it was spoken of in luke chapter one it speaks about uh both of them here and it says something about them that's very very important um would you read for me um verse uh, five and six of luke chapter one when you get a chance wes has someone as okay well. yeah yeah just a second okay um uh, well I'll, you want to read it ben Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Okay. Uh, you got it, Terry? I'll get it. Go ahead. Uh, I'll read it. I'll read it. Okay. That was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abi. Um, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. So we have Elizabeth and we have Zacharias. And they were both, listen to this carefully, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commands and the ordinances of the Lord, how? Blameless. They were they no, they, they no sin. They were blameless. So they, they were walking, we would say, walking in the spirit, in the spirit not in the flesh. Because if they would have been walking in the spirit, I mean, in the flesh, they would not have been blameless, correct? So they were walking in the spirit. Okay. Wes had something to say? Yes. Oh, so, Go ahead, Wes. Yeah, I was just thinking about um, what you were quoting from um, Galatians chapter five. I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because you were asking Cedric, what is walking in the spirit opposed to walking in the flesh? Because that's that's a great question, you know, because, you know, what how would you define that? And, you know, if you just look at Gal- Galatians chapter five, like you referenced, about the works of the flesh and connected over into Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Um, you know, verse 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, God did by sending his Son in the likeness of sin, full flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh so it's really how i would see it is christ in his lifestyles paved a way to show us on how we should walk in those same footsteps that he walked in Um, and that's kind of like what you're you're relating to 
Um, you know, in in Second Peter chapter two, when you talked about um, suffering in the flesh and following in Christ's footsteps, because um, Second Peter chapter two uh, or Second Peter chapter four says, "Arm yourself with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin." And that's kind of like what you were referencing in the past, the two chapters previous to. So if you're walking in the teachings of Christ as he walked, like you said, you're turning your cheek, you're you're not repaying evil for evil, but you're overcoming evil with good. That's the concept of walking in the spirit because it's the spirit of life in Christ Jesus's message that is delivering you from the law of sin and death so it, it's not just christ as his person but it's his teachings and that's kind of like what we were talking about in our in our, in our last teaching yeah that, that's um, and, and, and a lot of people uh, don't think that you uh that, that you that you need to do that or that you should even do that that order that is the teachings of christ that is the way to live by walking in the spirit uh but, but let me finish this in First Peter chapter 2, what he was saying here, um, he says, First uh, Peter chapter 2, uh, after, we, after he said no guile was found in the mouth, and, and, and guile is, is, is complaining, or using ugly language, speaking bad, down to somebody, whatever it might be. And we know that James chapter 1 verse 27 says that, that he that does not refrain his tongue, his, his Christianity is worthless. You know, he can say he's a believer, he can say he's a Christian, but it's worthless. And then he, he goes on further and he says here, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He did not say anything, he didn't fight back. Uh, when he suffered, he didn't threaten. You know, you, some people, they go through some suffering, they say, yeah, you do that to me again and I'm going to do something such to you. But Jesus didn't do that, did he? They hit him, they did all that, he didn't do that. That's how we're to live. That's, that's to be our life but committed himself to him that judges righteously. He said, Lord, you take care of it. In Romans chapter 12, it actually says there, in, in Romans chapter 12, if you want to go there, uh, the scripture talks about that a little bit uh, toward the end of chapter 12. He says, uh, verse 19, well, let's, let's start at verse 17. He said, repay to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much as lies in you, <coughs> excuse me, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. That is the opposite of what people do today. <laughs> he says, don't worry about protecting yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. Give that place to the Lord to protect you. Get, let him protect you. And in Psalms 18, if you read that sometimes, it talks about how King David said, man, the Lord is my defense. He said, man, I, my enemies came against me. I cried to the Lord. And he said, I saw the Lord coming through the clouds in chariots with fire coming out of his nostrils and smoke out of his ears. Like he was so angry to, to avenge David's enemies that were coming at him because the Lord wants to, do, wants, to take care of you, wants to take care of you. You're his child. But, you, but the moment you start trying to do it, the Lord's not in it. You done messed up. You got to give it to the Lord. He said, vengeance is mine. So he said, devil of a vision, not yourself, but rather give place to the wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Some people say, well, you know, if I don't do something, they're just going to walk all over me. So you'll get a reward. You'll get your reward. Yeah, it, verse 14 says, bless those who persecute you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Um, so, so, uh, so he says, uh, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with the good. Amen. That's just what you just said, Don. Bless those that curse you and do all manner of evil right. against you. And where I'm at with that, and I would have read it several times, and I've read it. I mean, the motive behind doing that work is not that I'm heaping coals on your head. I don't want to have that motive. You follow what I'm saying? Like, hey, you, you got to understand heaping coals, hot coals. It sounds like I'm really trying. In the day, that was a blessing. Oh, really? Yeah. 
uh, because they used coals to heat and cook and they used to carry them in bowls over their head. Okay. So that's what that verse actually refers really? to. Well, see, that, that really makes a lot tradition. more sense yeah. because it sounds right. to me like you're doing Yeah, 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 yeah. It didn't sound so, like to me. Either. It sounds like I'm still trying, trying to get over on this person. The, if the heart's not correct, yeah. then you're not, what are you doing? No, it, 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 was a blessing. it was actually a blessing. Yeah, that's good, Don. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you do something to somebody, somebody just blesses you back and blesses you back. You you you, you feel, and you, you being a bad guy, you know, you're like, you know, how can you keep doing that to them, you know? Because that's kind of what that heap of coal is doing. It's not that you're hurting them, it's that you're showing them, you know, because by them speaking evil, I mean, you see the good work come forth from you. They, they'll say, man, that, that's, that just, that doesn't look right. You know, I was talking to Cedric because they like a lot of times, you know, in a job or something, they, you know, they'll make fun of you. They'll, they'll, you know, criticize you, whatever, you know, for your face. But then when, when the nitty gritty comes down and that person really goes through some hard times, I found this over and over in my life. Uh, what, what do they do is they, the first person they go to is that person that, you know, stood up and for the Lord and that didn't, that didn't retaliate. They said, man, he's got something that nobody else has. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm going to go talk to him. I'm going to go find out. I'm gonna, I need some help. Or they know? have a sincere prayer need. Yeah. To come to you. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you can pray too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, so anyway, uh, so the Lord commits himself to them, to the, to, to the father, to uh, take care of, of those things. And, um, in uh, first Peter chapter two, another scripture to, to call to mind, um, it says that uh, in, in chapter four of First Peter, if you go there, this is an important verse because a lot of people think this is really strange. Verse 12, chapter four, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange things happening to you. <laughs> you know, you ever go through something, you know, you get, you, you have something really coming at you and you're like, why me? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, this, this is like so weird. Why I'm doing everything right. You know, and why is all this coming at me? You know, why are these people hating on me at all? Well, they said, don't think that's strange. That's supposed to happen. You know, but at the time when it's happening, you're like, you know, a person James, can be tempted James to say, what in the world's going on? Huh? James says, count it all joy. That's right. Count it all joy. That's right. Amen. Okay. So let's go back to, uh, <coughs> Uh, we're st still speaking about being patient for the coming of the Lord. So let's go back now to 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's continue there. Um, it says in verse 3 of chapter 3 of 2 Peter, it says, Knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust or desires, um, and saying, "Where, Hey, man, where's the promise of this coming? You, what are you living for the Lord for? He's not coming back. You know, what, what happened? You, you know, you, you left alone. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things still just like they were from the creation. Heard that before. Uh, and then it goes on. And but, it, but if you skip down with me to verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Listen, the Lord's not, the Lord doesn't want anybody to perish. The Lord doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He's not willing to, any, he's long suffering, waiting for that person whenever they're ready to, whenever they will turn from their ways and turn to the Lord. Well, he's not, he's not willing to, any should perish, but that all would come to that place of the knowledge of the now, Lord. In Romans, it talks about uh, him waiting on the full number of the Gentiles, does that have to do mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, it, it can be also, yeah, till the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. But but that all should come to what? That's an important word. Amen. You know, it's not just to just come to the Lord, but they come to repentance. That What, what is repentance? It's turning, I'm going to change your mind, turning from the way that you were before to walking in a new direction and walking in the Lord. It's also, like I talk to people, before like to make it really really practical you know because you'll tell somebody to stop sinning or to turn from sin and they hear you 
but in their mind, like, okay, I don't know which which sin that you're talking about. Like, what what sin do I need to? They can't even identify in their head, real quick. You know, what sins need to go? Because there's so much so much clutter up there. So to practice to make it practical for people, I help them by identifying what those sins are. You know, I say, okay, what what type of influences are you are you causing yourself to be consumed by? What TV shows you watching? What music you're listening to? What people you have around you? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what type of friends are you carrying around you? You know what I mean? What type of media or websites you are indulging in? All this stuff play a part. You know, also Cedric is is reading your Bible. Yeah. You know, when you read the Word, I mean, it's all over the place. If you just open your eyes, right. the, uh, I saw we had three uh, comments on the last video. We had somebody says. Man, it's so simple. <laughs> it's it's like so simple when you just look at just do what Jesus said to do. Yeah.